welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We're talking cricket now. Australia has named a 23-man preliminary squad for the white ball tour of the West Indies. Eight of the players, Steve Smith, David Warner, Pat Cummins, Mitchell Stark, Josh Hazelwood, Moses Henriques, Alex Carey and Mitchell Swepson make a return after missing the last white ball campaign. The squad is completed by Captain Aaron Finch, Ashton Agar, Jason Berendorf, Mitchell Marsh, Glenn Maxwell, Riley Meredith, Josh Philippe, Jai Richardson, Kane Richardson, Tanvir Sanga, Darcy Short, Mitchell Stark, Marcus Stoinis, Mitchell Swepson, Andrew Tai, Matthew Wade and Adam Zampa. Well, the Aussies will play five T20 matches in St. Lucia and three one days in Barbados in July. So on, we have a packed schedule, Georgia Lance, on July 9th, the first test of the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground in St. Lucia. The next day, July 10th, there's the second T20 International. Then they have two days rest left. No, they have one day rest. And then on the 12th, they're back out for the third T20. Then um, on the 14th, the 16th, July 20th. So they get one day rest between each of their T20s. Then they move on to the ODIs with a, a four-day rest. And yeah, one day in between and they're playing their third ODI on July 24th at the Kensington Oval in Barbados. Well, still with the Aussies, Pat Cummings, Josh Hazelwood, Mid Stark and Nathan Lyon have written an open letter denying any knowledge of teammates cheating during the Sandpaper Gate shame in South Africa in 2018. The four men wrote the letter in response to a recent interview by Cameron Bancroft in which he hinted they were aware of the plot to tamper with the ball during that now infamous incident in Cape Town. This is what they said. We have already answered questions many times on this issue but we feel compelled to put the key facts on the record again. We did not know a foreign substance was taken onto the field to alter the condition of the ball until we saw the images on the big screen at Newlands. And to those who, despite the absence of evidence, insist that we must have known about the use of a foreign substance simply because we are bowlers, we say this. The umpires during the test match, Nigel Young and Richard Illingworth, both are very respected and experienced umpires, inspected the ball after the images surfaced on the TV coverage and did not change it because there was no sign of damage. We respectfully request an end to the rumour mongering and innuendo. It has gone on too long and it is time to move on. Regards Pat Cummings, Josh Hazelwood, Midstock, Nathan Lyon. Well, still with us is Fazir Mohammed. Faz, what do you make of this? Of course, the apology and all that. Well, let's put it in context. Uh, the, the Australians, they take themselves too seriously when it comes to cricket, all this baggy green and, and, and all of that. For, for decades, people have been tampering with the ball. I, I recall in early 1992, when the English were making a lot of noise about it, Alan Lam and so on, suggesting that the Pakistanis, Wasim Akram, Wakar Yunus and so on, were using bottle tops and so on. Uh, Imran Khan, uh, who had then just ended his career, said, well, you know, everybody does it, West Indies do it and so on. And I recall Michael Holding, who had just come to the end of his career. And you know, Michael doesn't put water in his mouth for anybody. And he says, well, speak for yourself. Uh, be because the fact is that everyone tries to pull everyone else in when something like this happens. And you've, and this has been triggered by Cameron Bancroft. So when the, the, the four bowlers reference individuals with their innuendos, they're referencing one of their own. One of their own was banned for nine months. Warner and Smith were banned for 12 months. Yet you have the South African captain at, at, the, at the time, he was caught uh, ball tampering. He didn't get such, such a ban because again, the Australians make such a big hoo-ha about anything associated with cricket. It's almost as if you've committed first-degree murder when you do something wrong in the game. So they've brought this on themselves. So every bit of innuendo, every bit of speculation, every time a player or a former player or a current player makes a comment about it, it blows up into this huge mushroom cloud that they would have created for themselves simply because they have made such a big deal of something that's been going on for a long time, but were caught red-handed at Newlands. And for all of their talk about integrity and honesty and drawing a line and so on, they are merely shown up to be hypocrites. 
On the point of Ken Bancroft, though, Fazir, I, I'm certain that the journalist who interviewed him for that, that, that big spread where this, this story came from wasn't having that as an angle that he was, that he was intended to pursue. It, it just came about by accident. I'm wondering about Ken Bancroft, though, and how forthcoming he was with details in the original investigation, which led to the sanctions against himself and his colleagues. I, I, I got the impression that there may have been some things that he didn't disclose and that upon reflection, perhaps he's saying, you know, I should have said all these things at the time. Really, George? You didn't think that the journalist knew what he was doing? I, I can't accuse you of being naive. What on my first day back after almost five weeks, I have to find myself do, doing that because quite clearly, the English know what they're doing. There's an Ashes series coming up at the end no, of no, the no, year. No, 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 not on that. No, man. Uh, what, don't get me wrong. The fact of this story and how juicy it is and potentially they st destabilizing, that is fine. That is perfect. So we're agreed on that. I'm saying the point about dropping an innuendo that the bowlers union knew what was happening and there were other people who knew. I'm saying, I don't get the impression that the journalist went into the interview to ask that specific question to get Cam Bancroft to, to nibble in the way he did to now cause this story. That's what I'm saying. I, I hear you on that. And, and sometimes, I mean, as a journalist yourself, you would know that. Sometimes you might know that a player, you've heard it through the grapevine, is, 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 is really upset that he's been held out to dry when the bowlers have gotten away ah, so free. Yes. And, and, and sometimes you pick that up and you say, well, okay, I've been crucified for this. I'm not in the Australian squad anymore. And everyone is assuming that the bowlers knew nothing about this. Everyone is assuming that Darren Lehman, the coach, knew nothing about this. And we all remember when this first blew up, Steve Smith said, I don't know anything about this. I have no idea what is going on here. We've never, we don't play the game that way. And then it all started to unfold. And again, when you take yourself so seriously, when you're so sanctimonious and, 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 and so high and mighty about it, because we're all humans, because we all slip occasionally, when you slip, you slide, when you've put yourself on that very, very high pedestal. Yeah, I, I tell you this as we go to the break. The banter from the stands for the next Ashes is going to be <laughs> uproariously funny, I can assure you, with all of the ammunition that the Poms have on these Aussies now. And four hurt men writing a joint statement. I wonder which one of them penned it or which, who, which, of them, which of them chose their lawyer to write the statement on behalf of the four because they're hurting so much because of the innuendo caused by Cam Bancroft's interview. Poor Aussies, bleeding hearts. Anyway, thank you for your time today, Fazir. Good to reconnect once again. And just before you go, I was watching horse racing in Britain recently. I know you're not a horse racing man. And there's a horse, though, that had a very grand name, uh, pun intended. The horse is called the Grand Vizier. I never heard that before, so I went and I did a check. You know what it is. So I said, hmm, how can I call Fazir the Grand Vizier without it not being corny, without my audience not being left to wonder what the hell I'm, talk I'm talking about. I haven't found it yet, but when I find it, I'll use it. I'll, I'll look out for it. I'll look out for it. Excellent. Thank you very much. All the best. Fazir Mohammed there, back on the windmill, well, back on the treadmill, rather, of talking about cricket and the West. Not the word I used, treadmill, because it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes, and we are just right here just the same. All right, we take a break, we come back with more.